Hey, go and look at some valve timing. Lots of measurements are done in degrees, and it seems very confusing to everybody. Um, to begin with, on this engine, the manufacturers put in four a technicians to quickly identify timing between the crank and the double overhead cams. Manufacturer in this case has gone through and with a pip mark on the crankshaft gear is indicated by right there on that shoulder. You'll note a yellow link that's attached to that. Very nice setup. They have then counted a number of links on the pole side of the chain and gone to the top and where the timing indicator mark is, which is a slot on top of the timing advance gear. It lines up with an orange link as we see there, orange or pink or however that comes out. If we go over to the exhaust camshaft, we're going to see a pink link also, and that actually lines up with a couple of pip marks. And also note the keyway or the round pin in the center of the shaft that lines up with that. And that's how they relate this. It goes very quickly. Uh, for this manufacturer and if this sprocket's used for the intake you can see where the eyes there and here they've actually used an E on that side but he is physically lined up at that point right there so those are a fantastic way when brand new or for reference or removing anything it works very quick one misconception though is that every time we come around or every other time everybody thinks that these marks should line up with them again so there's one there's two so that would be intake compression power exhaust but the links in no way have even found their way back to that chain to make these guys physically get back to their existing spot i would have to turn this engine and i did it earlier a total of 72 times around before these links would ever correspond with those marks again so don't ever use those colored links upon disassembly for purpose of identifying if it's in time or out of time unless you're ready to rotate this engine 72 times on this one right here then so that's something to definitely keep in mind lots of questions and so on like that over that over the years with that then also to identify piston on this we know it goes from top dead center to bottom dead center so I've taken and literally made a barber pole out of this coat hanger, as you'll see right there. And I can take and rotate this engine now. And by watching this, we'll see that the piston is, goes from top dead center to bottom dead center, back to top dead center right there. So that gives us some idea of that. But once I reach top dead center, note the amount of distance that I can rotate my wrench back and forth without that coat hanger moving at all. That means we don't know where true top dead center is. And because of the overlap of the crank and so on like that versus the piston not moving. So that there, of course, and we missed it in the film. I'll do it one more time. That there gets confusing. So there is a way of finding true top dead center because again, if you watch it, you can see how far I'm moving without the coat hanger moving on that. So there's several degrees there that the crank swings back and forth without any piston movement. So what is true top dead center? With that, let's mount a degree wheel on to the, to the front of this engine and find true top dead center. With that concept though, this degree wheel, again, is laid out with bottom dead center, top dead center, but it only the numbering system only goes in 90 degree increments. So that tells us then if we're before top dead center, after top dead center, and then we have before bottom dead center and after bottom dead center. Well, we have to take into account the direction that we're going to turn the engine itself. So being that this engine does turn clockwise, any number system between 0 and 90 this way is before top dead center because we're coming 
up to it and then any of the 90 degrees after this top dead center is after top dead center as we're leaving it. But once I reach this point, instead of saying we're further, further, and further away from top dead center, we're coming up on another key component, and that's bottom dead center. So the numbering system will lead us into our bottom dead center. So this is before top dead, or before bottom dead center. And in this next 90 degree quadrant here, you'll see we are after bottom dead center. But then once we reach 90 degrees after bottom dead center, we start coming up before top dead center. So that number system does get a little confusing because it's not a continuum of 360 degrees, but it really is true for what's going on in communication of the piston as in before top dead center and bottom dead center. With that then and with that swing that we have on it, somehow we have to figure out what true top dead center is. And with that, made up a little tool and we're going to use this guy here in a second and it contains nothing more than in this case here a non fowler adapter that you would put your spark plug in and this is the exact same thread as the spark plug so I can screw this into the spark plug hole now I have dropped a quarter inch bolt that's extra long on this and if I take this guy and put him into the cylinder what will happen when the piston comes up when the crank starts swinging up it'll actually stop the piston this direction and then I go back around the other way and it'll stop the piston so I'll never be able to swing past top dead center and as you'll see here in a little bit we'll adjust the degree wheel down below to maybe be 20 degrees before top dead center 20 degrees after top dead center and with that then we can center our degree wheel on the crankshaft giving us the true bottom or top dead center on it. So with that then I'm going to have to remove our barber pole up on top and then of course I'm going to take this adapter with a socket and literally put him in the spark plug hole and we'll take that down in. I have measured out the bolt already to make sure that it protrudes far enough into the cylinder that it will physically stop the crankshaft from moving. Let me get a good foundation, a good seat on this unit there then. There we go. And one more time I'm going to then take off the pulley to show you how I can rotate back and forth but not be able to go completely around. So I do have a piston stop that inhibits this from going to top dead center. Okay. And then I'm going to get a hold of this guy. Oops, and we was maybe at top dead center. So I'm going to have to bring it off of there and then run my non fowler adapter down again. And around we go. Now when I come up, I gotta be cautious because I'm probably gonna run the piston into that guy. And there it is. It stopped at that point. It doesn't want to go anymore because the piston ran into that bolt. So if I go back the other way, oh, dead stop. So I'm not able to get my indicator point within a couple of degrees there on that. And that's a good thing. Now, this up then, once it centers this degree wheel, we're going to fasten him back on there. I'm going to continue to use the crescent wrench to turn the crankshaft. You could use a flywheel wrench or whatever you have available. But I'm going to lightly snug this, give him a little bit of resistance so that I can adjust both ways. Now we're also going to need an indicator then that would reach out to the outside and indicate my top dead center, bottom dead center. So I've taken a coat hanger, put an eyelet, I'll take a washer on a bolt that I've already found to fit a mechanism over here on the side. And we're then going to bolt this wire on there to a water pump bolt. And we'll stick him right in there. And then I'm going to snug it down, and I can bend this wire to any position I want 
for reference to my degree wheel. So I'm taking lightly snug this down, and there we go. Of course, we'll have to take the bouncing out of him. Now comes the time that we can see that. If I take my crankshaft and I try to move it forward this direction, it'll take me a couple of tries. Of course, we've got to go half a turn and so on. I'll work my way around. Piston's coming up on top, dead center. And there it stopped. So with that, I've stopped at that point. Now we're just going to guess right here. Stop this from bouncing. And I'm going to go to 20 degrees right there on that. And that's 20 degrees before top dead center. Now let's rotate it back. And now I've got to be cautious not to touch my wire. I'm not using the bolt in the end for the fact that it could make my degree wheel slide around. We're on the opposite way, we're going in the reverse direction, and bang, stopped right there against the piston. Now we was at 20 the other way, note that we're at about 18 this direction there, and so I'm going to have to then, or 8 degrees, so I'm going to then have to then adjust by spinning the wheel on the actual crankshaft. 8 from 20 gives me 12. So if I would add tw or uh, add 6 degrees, I'll split it in half. That should take me up right about in that area. And I'm going to stop there at about 14 degrees on that. Now if I take the crankshaft and go the opposite way, I should end up at 14 degrees also. So what I'm doing is finding true top dead center by shuffling this around, knowing that I stopped the piston at the exact same height every time. And if I come around there, oh, I stop. And with that, I'm at 15 degrees. So I'm one degree off. So I'm going to go just a wee little bit I can double check myself. Let me check from your angle what you're seeing. And there we go at about 14 on the tip of that. Just to verify, I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going anti-clockwise, opposite way of it that it should go. And we're going to see if this thing stops at 14 degrees. And there it stopped. I felt it hit the dead stop. And at this point right there, then folks, you can see we're really close to 14 degrees on that. So I'd say we've got this guy set up with our indicator that this degree wheel will actually find true top dead center. Now what I'm going to do is physically reach in and remove our piston stop. And I could put our piece of wire back in the cylinder. But we will truly know at this point what true top dead center is. Okay, got him out. There we go there. That then gives me the ability to turn this crankshaft the whole way around again. And if we was to watch our wire along with this, so we'll zoom out so we can watch piston arrangement along with our top dead center down below. there. But then we'll come up. Ah, let me get on this. I'm not in the way here, folks. And I'm going up, up, up. Stop moving. 
and then down, down, down. So I have a grand total of how many degrees that I can rotate this without our coat hanger moving. And you're looking about 20 degree, close to uh, close to 20 degrees that we can rotate this without the piston moving up on top. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me get set up to put a dial indicator up on top, but at this point you can see that we have found, we can have the ability to find true top dead center with our indicator by using a piston stop. 